Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning and Marine. In this video, I'm going to do a uh, leak down test, and uh, to, the leak down test will give me a condition of this engine uh, similar to a compression check. But the leak down test helps you pinpoint the problem more precisely. So, um, the way a leak down test works, and I built this homemade leak down tester out of myself. Um, so, this is your incoming air pressure, and this gauge is on the incoming side. And then somewhere in here is a orifice. Uh, the Federal Aviation Administration, I think, sets the orifice size through some standard for uh, 0 .040 inches. So it's an orifice uh, that I've drilled that size, and it's about right here where my thumb's at inside here. So the air pressure comes in here, and you want to adjust your regulator on your air compressor to read 100 psi to make the math easier. So you got 100 psi coming in. And also, if you if your regulator on your uh, or your uh, pressure switch on your air compressor typically shuts off at 120 psi, it gives you a period of silence before it drops down to 100 and restarts the compressor. So, um, you set the uh, compressor regulator for 100, and it gives you uh, 100 psi on this gauge. After the orifice, you have the downstream pressure from the orifice, and that's this gauge. So that's what you read the pressure on the second gauge, this white gauge here, and that tells you the condition of the engine. So, if you have 100 psi coming in and you have a, roughly 90 to 100 psi uh, on the downstream side, that means your engine is in good condition because the engine is not leaking your, uh, more than the orifice. So the, the actual bottleneck is the leak inside the engine, which means that your engine is in good shape. It's tight. There's, no, there's not very many leaks, so the pressure stays up. But if on the downstream side you read less than, say, about 85 or less, that means your engine is leaking more than the orifice, so the pressure on the downstream side of the orifice drops off. So you're now leaking uh, more than that orifice, so that means that there's uh, something wrong with your engine. Either your valves are leaking, your rings are leaking, or you uh, have a head gasket blown. Something is bleeding off pressure. And why I like the reason I like a leak down test is because um, it's silent, and you can hear a leak in the, in the intake side. You can hear a leak in the intake valve. You can hear a leak in the exhaust valve. You can hear a leak in rings if you listen inside the crankcase. And then if you measure two or more cylinders, uh, excuse me, if you measure two cylinders that are side by side and they both leak down, chances are you've got a head gasket blown between those two because one side is uh, not holding the pressure. It's, leak, it's leaking off to the other side, which is open to the air through a valve or something. So uh, head gaskets show up as uh, two adjacent uh, cylinders that are low on pressure or low on your leak down test. So um, I'm about to test. Uh, so basically, in the, the customer told me that he was on this particular engine. This is a small block V8. Still not sure if it's a 5.0 or 5.7 yet. So the customer told me that it, um, a mechanic told him number six cylinder was uh, had zero compression. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking one. And uh, so what you do to check one? So this mark here lines up when one is top dead center or number six is top dead center. Well, as I rotated this engine around, I had my finger in the spark plug hole number one, and I felt to try to push my finger away. As this, as this line here was approaching from this direction, I felt it push my finger away. So I know that that's number one on top dead center on the firing stroke. So that's when you, that's how you, that's where you check your leak down. Uh, you, that's where you do your leak down test on the on the firing stroke. So when I get to done testing number one, then I'll jump over to number six. So it's, it, the firing order is one eight four three six. So one and six are opposing cylinders. So I'll rotate this this. Uh, bouncer, it's 306 degrees to this mark lines up again, and then I'll jump over and test number six. So what I'm gonna do is uh, uh, hook up the air gauge to this uh, number one cylinder, and then I'll show you the result as it's leaking down. Um, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, number one is, uh, I got 100 PSI on the incoming side, and I've got about 80, let's say 88, 89, on the leaving side, that's actually a pretty good number. Um, this engine's old, so it might be worn out a little bit, but to hold uh, almost 88, 85% of the pressure is, is a good, I mean, that cylinder's number is good. So number one checks out good. I can hear some leaking, but it sounds, um, let's see if I can, it just sounds like it's coming from the crankcase. So, I think it's coming out of that PVC hole there, or that's where I'm hearing the sound. So this cylinder is holding pressure, and it's a good cylinder. So I'm going to move over to number six now. Okay, I've now moved on to number six, and you can see that I've got a, let me see the glare. So I've got almost 100 PSI on the incoming gauge, and about 10 PSI on the, on the outgoing gauge. So that means this engine has got a problem number six. 
and I can hear it coming out the carburetor hole, so I can also feel air. I can feel air rushing out of this hole. Uh, that means it's got a significant leak on your intake valve. Over here on the exhaust side, I feel a little bit on the exhaust side too, so there's a Disconnect it so the compressor could catch up. Um, so basically, I, I could feel air coming out of here and hear it, but I also felt air coming out of the number six exhaust port, and I felt even more air coming out of number four. That's a little odd. So, um, probably means there's a blown head gas between uh, six and four, but um, I'll have to do a little more. Well, obviously, I'm gonna tear this thing down. That's I'm curious to see what that turns out to be. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish testing the rest of these, uh, rest of these uh, cylinders with this leak down tester and see how many others uh, have significant failure. So number six is definitely a big fail because I had about 10 PSI on the downstream side. Okay, I've now moved on to testing number five and I just want to show something interesting. So to do number five, you rotate the mark. The firing order is one, eight, four, three, six, five. So five's after six. So you rotate this engine another uh, you rotate the engine 90 degrees from where it was and that would be the next cylinder. So that's number five Well, it just so happens that these holes right here Are 90 degrees apart or actually they're uh, 30 degrees apart. So go 0 60 0 30 60 90 So I noticed that when this mark over here the mark was right here was lined up with that notch this hole was just a tad to the left of that notch. So all I did was rotate this thing 90 degrees where the next, this hole is just a tad left of the notch. So I keep doing that to test these cylinders in succession. So it's kind of interesting or it's kind of a, a, a bonus that these holes are drilled every 30 degrees. That helps me rotate this thing and know where I'm 90 degrees out or 90 degrees to the next cylinder. It's kind of interesting. I just want to point that out. So about to test number five and see what I get. Okay, I'm now testing number five, and you can see again, I've got 90 PSI coming in, and uh, or a little over 90 PSI, and about 10, 15 PSI on the outgoing side, so number five is failing also. In this case, I can feel air coming out of the exhaust side heavily, and I hear a little bit up here at the intake, but I hear a lot more at the exhaust, so number five is failing. All right, I'm now testing number seven. You can see it's only holding 65 PSI. So this is uh, also a failure. And it's also coming out of the, uh, I feel significant air coming out of the, the intake. So that's on this one, it's an intake valve failure. Moving on to the next one, moving on to two. Okay, I moved on to number two. You can see 90 PSI on the intake, about 15 PSI on the, on the outlet. And I feel, uh, I feel air coming out of this hole here. So uh, I can hear it. So number two is leaking out of the intake. I feel nothing. I feel nothing out of the exhaust port. So it's number two is not holding any pressure either. It's holding very little and it's leaking out the it's leaking out of the intake. Moving on to the next. Okay, I've moved on to number eight, and as you can see I've got 100 psi coming in, and I've got about 85 psi on the downstream side, and it's actually uh, not too bad. It's holding pressure. I hear a little bit leaking. But it sounds like it's coming from inside the crankcase. I feel nothing on the exhaust valve. And I, I see, I mean, I feel, and I don't, I don't feel, or, and I don't hear anything come out at the intake. So I think number eight is okay. The leakage must be due to rings. So it's leaking into the crankcase. See if I hear it. I'm listening to this PVC port. See if I can hear it there. Yeah, when I put my ear to that, that's your PVC line, that our PVC hole that goes down into your crankcase, and I can hear the air in there. So that's it's just leaking past the ring. So number eight actually is for an old engine it turns out not to be. Safe. Okay, I've now moved on to cylinder number four, and as you can see, about 100 psi coming in and about 15 psi on the out. Not well. I can hear a lot of feel and hear a lot of air leaking out the intake. So it's got a leaking intake on the exhaust. I feel nothing coming out the exhaust valve, so it's all coming out the intake. And it was number four is right next to number six. Possible head gasket don't know. Okay, I'm now doing number three, and it's holding uh, it's about 20 psi, but it's 100 psi on the inlet, so this one's leaking also. And uh, I can hear and feel a lot of air coming out the exhaust valve here. You can hear it when I do that. So number three is leaking out the exhaust. 
Okay, to wrap up, I've already done all uh, eight cylinders. I'm doing leak down tests on all, all eight cylinders, and I wanted to go over the why I do this. So, as someone who builds engines uh, for hire and sells them or rebuilds them for the customer, I'm going to warranty my work for a year. So, um, everything, all the information I can gather on an engine to help me understand why it broke in the first place helps me be a better builder and also uh, kind of gives me a little bit more confidence in when I put it back together that I knew I took care of the problem. Um, let's say I got to the end of tearing this engine down and didn't find anything. Now I'm like, well, uh oh, now what I do? So I didn't, if I didn't find anything, I don't know what caused the original problem. So a leak down test is, is just another tool or another process that gives me a, a, a kind of heads up as to what is possible wrong with this engine. It's, uh, some more, it's just that much more information that I have to figure out what happened to this engine. For example, these heads, there's something going on with these heads. There's multiple cylinders in here with leaking intake valves and leaking exhaust valves. So I know something is going on with these heads. So when I give it to the heads to the machine shop, um, if he tells me, uh, you know, the heads are fine, didn't need valve, valves or valve guys, I'm gonna be suspicious of that finding. So um, so that's, that's why I do a leak down test. Another reason, another positive or pro to a leak down test is that, as you notice, um, I didn't have to hook a power or battery or anything to this engine. To do a compression test, you got to turn it over the key or you got to turn it over the remote starter switch with a starter and a battery. So you'd have to hook up a battery and, and, uh, to do a compression test on this thing. So I, and I just, if I've got an engine in my shop, it's a pain in the tail to try to hook up power to it and get a battery in here and all that other stuff. So. And then uh, finally, a uh, leak down test may or faster. Um, I can you know, plug, uh, put, screw the, hole, the hose into the plug, run the leak down test in about 10 seconds, get a reading on the cylinder, and move on to the next one. It's not hard, at all, not hard to do at all, especially when you got a, a harmonic balancer. It cooperates with it and gives you a mark every, th every 90 degrees. So um, one other point I want to make, if you don't get it 90 degrees, if you're off you know, 10 degrees or so from the tie bit center on each cylinder, the air pressure in the cylinder will actually kick the motor and make it rotate because it's pushing down the piston in one direction or another. So you do need to get pretty close to being top dead center on each cylinder as you test it. And that, this harmonic balancer helped me a lot because I knew I was right on 90 degrees because of these holes being 30 degrees apart. So that's my, uh, I, per, I prefer leak down tests. I think they give you more information. Well, I know they give you more information. I can tell if it's a leaking intake, leaking exhaust, leaking to the crankcase. Um, possible blown head gasket. So I get a lot more information out of a leak down test than I do a compression check. Now that doesn't mean I don't do compression checks because it's still in the car and uh, and I'm gonna do a, you know, find out if there's something uh, wrong with the motor and I don't have access to my compressor, then yeah, I'll do a, a compression, tech, compression test instead. But I prefer leak down tests because they tell me more information, they're faster, and it uh, gives me additional diagnostic information to figure out what's wrong with this motor. So. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, uh, liked my homemade leak down tester. Um, I, I enjoy making my own tools instead of buying things when I can. It's kind of a, it's a curse <laughs> that I have. That's a long story I'll go into later. But uh, sometimes it's better to buy something brand new and not waste your time building something from scratch. But I built this years ago. I, built, I think I built this 10 years ago just for the fun of it because I wanted to build one. And uh it served me well, it's worked for years. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of beat up and rusted and the face is missing off that gauge there, but it still works, as you can see, so. Thanks for watching and uh, see you on the channel next time.